channel's strong commitment to be a successful bridge between art, artists and Rasikas, we here at Sikshila series hope to bring to you a series of personal interviews of various eminent artists and gurus from different fields doing path-breaking work keeping our core value system alive. We are incredibly happy to host the first interview of this season with noted gurus Shri Jairaj Krishnan and Srimati Jai Shri Jairaj Krishnan who are amongst the leading Veena players in the Carnatic tradition. Based in Chennai, they are passionate Vainikas who believe that the Veena holds a revered place in classical music and have dedicated themselves toward preserving and propagating the Gayaki style of playing the Veena. An A and top grade artists of AIR Chennai, both Guru Shri Jairaj and Guru Srimati Jayashri belong to the direct Shishya Parampara of Nadu Jyoti Shri Muttu Swami Dikshidar, who is one amongst the famous trinity of classical music. They both started their intensive training in vocal and Veena music at a very tender age under the tutelage of Vainika Vidwan, late A. Anantarama Ayer and his sister, late A. Champakavalli, who continued the Dikshitar Parampara that they imbibed from their father, who was a direct disciple of Ambi Dikshitar, the great grand nephew of Muddhaswami Dikshitar. The couple have also been extremely fortunate to receive tutelage from Sangeeta Acharya, late Vidwan Sri Chengal Pete Ranganathan. They have received many, many awards and titles, including the Nada Kala Vipanchi by the organization of Vipanchi of Padma Vibhushan, late Dr. M. Balamurali Krishna. The couple have started an organization called Veena Vadini with the multifarious objectives, namely teaching keen students the art of playing Veena, conducting chamber concerts to provide accessible platform for musicians, retracing Muthuswami Dikshita's pilgrimage and singing the Kritis that he composed on various gods and goddesses enshrined in the respective temples. They have also undertaken a mammoth archival project of recording 1000 compositions and 100 raga alapanas played on the veena by the duo. The latest feather in their cap is the launch of a one-of-a-kind mobile app called Veena JJ which is currently available at the Google Play Store. This will showcase the 1000 composition and the 100 ragas played by them. The latest audio album is a unique offering called Anandam Anantam, featuring tanams in 18 rare Karnatic ragas such as Balahamsa, Navroj, Vega Vahini and many more. This has been received very favorably by both the critics and the Rasika community alike. I could go on and on about this dynamic and accomplished couple, but how about we meet them and ask them about their journey directly? Namaskaram sir. Hello ma'am. Namaskaram. 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 Thank you so much for agreeing to come talk to us. Thank you so much. It's our pleasure ma'am. It's our pleasure. Absolute pleasure. You look gorgeous, ma'am. I don't have to say that at all. I love how you style yourself and sir, perfect match. I don't have a choice. <laughs> but she's done it really well, so I, you know, yeah. perfect for each other. Yeah, men rarely have a choice. <laughs> but she's done a really great job, sir. So, and I love how you set up and play out the perfect setting for a perfect couple. Yeah. I couldn't have chosen anyone better for our series. And we are very, very, very uh, happy to have you both here. Um, thank you. First question for both of you. So, what made you choose Veena? Or should I say, did the Veena choose you? Because uh, in this life, I've come to realize that as parents, most parents are, would be like, oh, why Veena? Let's go for Verum Patamato or Verum, you, you know, violin or something like that that's very safe. 
in uh, today's cultural uh, situ situation. Why would you choose the Veena? Did the Veena choose you? Answer. Both of you. It's it's both of you. Yeah, yeah, I will ask that. both of you to answer. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll start off. Let yeah. me start off first by saying that you're looking so pretty. Thank you so much, ma'am. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. I'm glad we match also. Uh, yes, pink. Okay. Um, actually, um, we started off with vocal in our school uh, that we went to in Calcutta, um, which is called Sri Guru Golanak. And our uh, gurus belong to the direct Shishya Parampara of Muthu Swami Dikshad. And that is how we also belong to that Parampara. It was an absolute must to first start on vocal lessons, irrespective of whatever other instrument you preferred to go for after a couple of years of vocal. Uh, in my case, what happened is at uh, the age of five, I started uh, vocal. And uh, two, three years later, my himself said that now you start playing Bini. It was he who chose the instrument. Wow, that's yeah. beautiful to choose yes. because usually parents I know when I started thinking it for, for my daughter they would not like, they're like no, 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 choose something small, compact, that's good enough. That was, that is beautiful that they chose the Veena Mom. I should say I'm very lucky. I'm blessed. Definitely. Sir, what about you, sir? In my case, uh, it's more to do with my being boisterous rather than anything else. Uh, the way it used to be is that my guru and my father, been, be it schoolmates right from school, they've been friends. So I don't know, ever since I was born, was born and I was, I've always been in that house. So it's never been a class, class for me, just been another extension of my home. So I used to be in their house and I used to, there's been a lot of Veena there, about eight, ten of them. So you and grew was, up with it, surrounded by it. Absolutely. And I used to be fitting around with the uh, Birida and all of it. And I used to, you know, play around with it. And, and my Guruji used to say, hey, don't touch it now. When the time comes, I will give it to you. Oh my God. <laughs> so, so that's how it used so to be. You basically start. didn't have a choice. You were surrounded by it so much. Absolutely, absolutely. You followed it. You know, the other thing is, uh, as Jeshi said, in during our time, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it just so happened that most of the things that used to happen at the music front used to be decided by our guru. That's true. So we hardly actually, uh, you know, thought about why he was asking us to do anything. So it was just one simple sentence of, hey, come on, let's start doing this. So we start doing it. So we never even thought about why, what, when, where, nothing. That's so. That's a very important point that you put across, sir. Because nowadays, I don't think the gurus are given that kind of choice, especially with respect right. to parents, because they think they know best. Especially in uh, in a culture that's like in the U.S., what happens is the parents are not able to connect with the guru or trust them enough. And I think it's a. Right thing that you just said that it's very important to give the freedom for the guru to see why, where the potential of the child is. Correct. Amazing. No, you know, you, you always allow them to run the show. You know, so you, that's, that's the key thing, you know. And sure enough, there comes a time in your life when you look back and uh, I'm sure Jeshi would agree, you know how it all makes sense. Right. When you're young, it's when you grow up and then you understand the logic yourself, they don't need to be explained. It's, it's so apparent. It's so apparent very, that it's very true. So that, that's how we started. And it makes sense, right? Sir, it makes sense if you have someone else to decide things for you. <laughs> the very true, I'm very, very true. Very no, true. It never struck us that we should ask why. That is, that's fair. So you do this so we do this. That's, very that's true, the very way. True. And uh, it's also to be said that it's the guru who will know if the child has the aptitude for it or not. Correct. Very true. The aptitude matters so much, right? For especially an instrument. Yes, the guru will be able to see the potential of the student, and he'll be the best person. 
So how would, could I ask both of you how your um, childhood was in Calcutta? Because um, that is something that I, I heard, sir, that you are, have an amazing list of the best chart um, shops. Yeah. Yeah, and that uh, we should we should definitely share it with us at one point. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, I, guess I think I will go first. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. definitely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, childhood in Calcutta. Honestly, we couldn't have asked for anything better. Okay, so I don't know. I mean, when I see children of today, I really feel a little sorry for them because it's such a young age. They have to be so you know responsible. That's true. Okay, and probably during our time, we never knew what was responsibility. We never knew what it was to study, what was not to study. I think when uh, we were children, I think 99% of the time we were on the road. It was hardly that 1% of the time when we would be barely there to either practice or to, you know, a little bit yeah. of study. So you lived with them basically, right? Absolutely. So. Either we play cricket or play football or we play kabaddi, we play... You know, it just be always on the road. And, you know, the part of Calcutta during those days at least was, it's just that not your own parent were your family. The entire street was your family. So people used to take care of you. I mean, the neighbors used to take care of you. There was like if one family cooks, the other person eats, family comes together. And when we used to have those cricket matches between one street versus another, so if you performed well on that Sunday, the rest of the week, you were the darling of the street. <laughs> but God help you if you fail. Even when you go to school, they'll catch you and say, hey, why did you do this? Why did you do that? And oh like, my God. <laughs> it's a big community. It's a real fun. And as I write, it's a place for fast food. That's and that's I have, true. in fact, about a year or two back, when I went back to my school, uh -huh. There are those people who, you know, used to sell those pani puris and stuff like that. They are still there and they don't seem to have aged. Wow. So, pani puri in Calcutta is my one of my life dreams, sir. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, it's they, genuinely... Yeah, they recognize you and it's a different world altogether. True, very true. In Calcutta, it's called kuchka. It's oh, wow. Kuchka. So, if you've tasted kuchka, you will not settle for anything else but that. Yes, sir. Oh my God. No, I really, next time I'll come, I definitely am going there, ma'am. I'm thinking. Yeah, surely. I'm going there. <laughs> Every Calcutta is a Puchka fanatic. Oh my God. So you guys have no exceptions, I guess. No, not at all. No, the life there is you know, uh, sorry, very different because I do remember my father, when, when in those days there was nothing called going by flight, everything was by train. Train, true. So, in the train, my father would make some friends. And those people from the station, if any time they would land at our house, take a bath, have a food, and then go where they wanted to. Oh my God. And it, it was nothing it big. Trust, right? Yeah. You can't think of those things today. I mean, those days it used to be so open and so different. Hmm. And at 4 o'clock or 4 in the morning, the doors used to open in our house until about 11, 11.30 at night, it never used to be closed. Wow. People coming in, people coming out, you do your work. How would a typical day be in your life, sir? Both, both of you, how? Uh, we would get up at about 4.30 in the morning. 4.30 in the morning. Yeah. And no, at that age... <laughs> I didn't have a choice because... My guru used to stay in a place and there was a lake near my house. So he would go there for a walk every day. So when he would go for a walk, before he en route, my house was en route. So he would come knock the door to check whether I started my practice. Okay, wow. On his way back, he would come back and again knock to see whether I'm continuing my practice. Oh my God. You had no... Have coffee, then speak to my dad for about five, ten minutes, and then go back to his class. So that used to be a clear two, two and a half hours. So whether you like it or not, you have to get up at four o'clock because he will be there at two thirty at your doorstep. Fair enough. Wow. But I think in Jayashree's case, it was a little different because she was by nature very, very, you know, focused. 
But I, I can see that. Boys have never been so. You know, they've got so many other things to do. But this is how we used to be focused. True, true, true. Ma'am, what about you, ma'am? What is the uh, uh, difficulty? The like? best thing about, uh, you know, the childhood is that uh, our school was only for about five hours duration. So it would start at 6.30 yeah, in the morning. The timing was very different, yes. Yeah, 6.30 to 11.30 in the morning or 12. So we used to, we got into the habit of getting up early, very early in life. So uh, it's not a surprise that every day. It's natural, right? Yeah. It's a natural thing. You don't have to make an effort at 3.45 or 4. Because school was early and then you come back. Suggest that even now children should wake up and students should start practice that early. I do think so. That's the best. That's the best. That's See, the amazing. Other, yeah, the other thing so happened in my life was my father used to sing. Uh-huh. Every day morning, five o'clock, he will start singing. And it will be like across. I mean, at least people in the neighborhood could hear. Right. So once we told him he should not be doing this and disturbing people so early in the morning. And so we told him you should start not before 7 a.m. So very reluctantly he agreed. From the next day, people started coming to our house to find out whether my father was well or whether he oh was my God. sick. Because they got so touching. That's so it used to be like that. It's a very different world. It's a very different world. Bengal is a known for their culture. Right? That's, it's a perfect place for you to have nurtured that love and uh, grown mom. I'm, I'm really happy. Uh, my next question is, what happened? How, what was your adjustment? I know both of you got married and then decided to come to Chennai. Is that right? Did yeah. I get Actually, we didn't decide to... No, it so happened. I think it looked like more of a preordained thing because, see, no. I used to work for American Express Bank in Calcutta. Okay. Okay, so it so happened that two years after I was there, they decided to open a branch in Chennai for the first time. The universe only, conspired to bring you to us. Yeah, absolutely. There are only three branches in American Express. It's a very a different sort of a bank. So they decided to open a branch in Chennai and they wanted me in Chennai. So that's how we got into Chennai. Wow. Otherwise, I didn't okay. really have a thing to come to Chennai, but it was also preordained. It is totally our, uh, our bargain. I, I can't find an English equivalent for that word. That you guys, uh, you know, that uh, happened and then you moved here. So, 1992 is when we moved. Wow. How was your reaction? Were you excited about it? Did you have your... Because there in Calcutta, you already had a base. You had things settled up and, you know, it's not easy to move... Um, across cities, like especially nowadays, there are so many families moving. So what was your experience at that time while moving and coming to Chennai and establishing a piece here? So there are two things and then I'll ask Jessica to also add up. One is that yes, we always felt that it was a good move for the sake of music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and said that, yes, it was a little bit of a difficult situation for both of us because Jessica was doing the master's in pharmacy at that time when I moved. So for one year, she was still in Kolkata and I was in Chennai. Okay. That is actually so relatable now. A lot of couples are going through that. Wow. Okay. So, and then she joined me in 1993. She joined me in 93. So that one year, she was in Kolkata and I was in Chennai. Sir, were you able to manage the cooking and all? Oh, no. I didn't have to do that because... In between, Jeshu would come, or you know, my mom used to be there. Ah, so, okay. Uh, but my parents were in Kolkata, so that was another thing. So Jeshu's parents were in Kolkata, but luckily my elder brother was in Chennai. Oh wow! Okay, so you had uh, some that was some, you know, support. Yeah, so that, that it was good. So how was the, uh, your experience, ma'am? Yeah, honestly, Purnima, uh, we had so much to do uh, while we moved here. Oh, Only nice. things to. We really didn't think through. But by the time we moved in, we were already, you know, uh, concert artists in Kolkata and we were friends with some some of the uh, musicians of our age group in Chennai. So right. they would uh, connect us to uh, different places where, you know, uh, they would want to host our concerts. And so that is how it uh, kind of. Uh, so, how was the music scene at that time, ma'am? 
the because now with social media everything is connected you know just an email a person saba you just contact or call them but before it was not like that right so how was the same what are the challenges you both face um i want to say actually we had any particular challenge you just had uh, some uh, people in the uh, music circle who were very knowledgeable and uh, who you had to uh, sort of uh, reach your music to and okay. get some certification from them so that they would say that yeah these people are very good we can have their kacheri and it was basically it there wasn't anything more to it than that so and they really knew who they are supporting or who they are supporting also didn't mean the fact that you ask people to get sponsorships or something right like it that. was not blind you had to prove music yourself music everything would happen to the same music Ah. I'll give you one example where when we first came in I don't think many people there were some people who knew what but not all of them You're right so once we played a concert in the outskirts of Chennai called Madi Park Mhm and there the Krishna Gana Sabha secretary had come Oh wow had come. Yeah after listening to us next day he called us and he said why don't you play for the season That's amazing and similarly we played in other places and then the indian finance secretary had see you know seen us so he wrote a letter to us and then he said why don't you you know play for us wow. so you know that sort of a thing was there those, those days i mean the secretaries definitely knew their music music right what, right what they so what and, think about it now sir like now the students are, now get ready to go now. things are a little different now but i think you know change is the order of the day there is nothing permanent that change so one right. need to adapt to ourselves to change but yeah i mean you can change for the better all the time mm. you know you don't need to hold on to something so you can always figure out what's new and what's what good is about new it. very true very true because we make that mistake always right we always think the older is always the better and somehow the newer is bad so um that's it's a very nice perspective to say you know you have to adapt for the better that's really nice to hear sir so you can keep your old and can keep adapting as well so what is important to your music you don't change your music but you adapt to the new world you have technology advancement happening there you know you right the way to reach to more people why not make use of it so you have Very to be true. rooted you have to be rooted yet you have to adapt the technology to what you stand for perfect that's what means music means to you right don't all basics and this is what you're saying is the most important um, thing that you can tell the current generation of youngsters for music i feel it's um, such a beautiful message that you have um, both of you have i think that's the principle you both follow also right in your absolutely, absolutely. Your words about your um, your institution and how this principle is what has brought you both forward Yeah. See, we've also faced a little bit of flack at times, but we have not, you know, bothered too much. We started playing on the electronic vena. Uh huh. So, prepared by Raj. So people used to say, "What well, using this? This is not the Saraswati vena," which is fine. It is not Saraswati vena. But what was more important was it was helping us reach a little, you know, the crowd in terms of volume and things like that. But what we did not want to change was the content. very important very true that was important but the way to communicate that content could be different ah that's the key the use of the, the content world. but how to send it across now many many people are playing on the electronic music actually said us that that's obvious ma'am from all the work because it's easy to carry and transport it so they don't think twice they say okay this is there as an alternative for me it will never replace the saraswati vena True. but at least of course not native to have it as a stop gap in times when you are not able to use that for uh, saraswati vena to many places right so we have experimented on all that but what we have probably not changed over a period of time is at least probably what we have been taught by our gurus in terms of the accepted grammar ah uh. Okay. something we probably have held on to maximum that we could 
but we probably experimented on the paraphernalia of how to reach that music across. Beautifully put, sir. That's such a nice say, accepted grammar, but then, you know, experimenting at the same time, sticking to it. Beautifully, I said, sir. My, another very important uh, and relevant question that I felt a lot of youngsters here in this field want to ask is that uh, social media. Uh, I know it's like, it's some right now, especially under the quarantine and the lockdown, um, for a lot of artists, that is where you still find relevance. Like till before, we can almost say before Corona and after Corona. Like till before Corona, you could still go out, present yourself. I know a lot of artists who were really not into social media still. And it was not expected. But now, literally overnight, everybody was expected to have a, a presence online. And then, you know, constantly keep pumping new stuff. Because our people have such short attention spans. So uh, can you tell me your experience uh, with this and what your suggestion mainly is for upcoming uh, artists or young students? Because they have so much pressure, they, they don't know what to do. They have peer pressure to constantly keep doing something new, but they don't want to give up this. So as teachers, what is the most important thing that you would tell them right now? Um, presentation is one thing, learning is the other. So if you want to be an artist only for the social media, mm -hmm. social media will lap it up. But what is in it for you? Where will be mm -hmm. your growth? Where will be your growth? Our music lies in the classicism. It lies in the Raga Alapanas. It lies in four-hour concerts. It lies in the Ragam Tanam Pallavis. It lies in the Neravals. It lies in the Kalpana Swarams. It lies in the big, big uh, kritis of the uh, great composers of your and those are the things that you need to preserve. So you have to keep learning on. So if today people don't want to hear you for a four hour concert, someday they surely will. Yes. And even if someday doesn't come, at least you will be fulfilled at the end of it. You know, thinking that you have done justice to what you have learned. True, very true, very so true. We need to do things for ourselves and for our own gurus. Right. Your guru is teaching you something not for nothing. He doesn't have to become popular by teaching you something. He's just right. trying to get what his guru or her guru has taught that person. Right. So you should Gurus compromise basically. You cannot compromise your param or your day for trying to be relevant right now. Right? There is no compromise on learning. If you want to try to be relevant, sing classically relevant songs. Don't right. sing new songs in the garb of some classic classicism and call yourself a classical musician. Please that's don't do that. <laughs> that's such an important point. I, I, I feel you. And it's a, it's a very difficult uh, art. It's not a bad thing, but if you are going to call yourself a classical singer, true, true, true. Nobody is wanting to, at least I don't want to see how you are singing a movie song correctly. Uh, absolutely. That is a side thing that if you want to present to, that's fine, but that cannot be the definition of why you are a classical singer. Absolutely. You have to have your own definition for it and you have to preserve the definition which has been handed over to you. True, very See, true, ma'am, very true. Give you two examples, okay, that probably will give you how we will probably view it and how we've grown up with it. Mm -hmm. There's this great musician called G.N. Balasubramanian, G.N.B. sir. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you've heard of him. Yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. He, he revolutionized the way we, he, you know, in a uh -huh. So he had a very, very ardent follower, a fan who would never miss any of his concerts wherever he sang. Wow, okay. Then suddenly he stopped going to his concerts oh. completely. Okay. So somebody asked him, why? Why have you gone? Not, why aren't you going? He says, you know, I have a problem because when I listen to his concert, mm -hmm. the next four or five days, I'm not able to work at my office. My office work is suffering. So all the time I can talk about that music, I'm not able to work. So my work is suffering, my livelihood is suffering, so I cannot go for his concert. Right. How many of us can say that now? Oh, it's a very valid. I'll give you another example. This is again, this is all actually this happened. One gentleman was again listening to GNP, sir. Mm -hmm. And 
he was about 80 90 percent of the concert was through so he had to go home so he came out and then there was a cycle rickshaw man sitting okay so he asked him can you come i will go to so and so place mm -hmm. so the cycle rickshaw man said by all means i'll come but if you can wait for another 10 minutes because after this i know he's going to sing this Kriti. i want to hear that and come. hear that and come wow okay that is end the third thing that I really want to tell you is this. There was this, I will not take name, there was this big, you know, saint, okay? And uh, he was at the same time as uh, Tansen. Oh, oh, wow, okay. During the same time, and Tansen, as you know, was a part of the Navaratna of Agba. Yes, yes, sir. And he felt he was better than Tansen. Hmm. So he said, I want to be, I want to go to Akbar's court okay. and prove that I am better than him. Okay. But those days, whatever your guru said is what is done. Fair enough. Yes. So the guru no said, question at all. not yet ready. So he continued his practice for a couple of years. Then he went and asked his guru, am I ready? The guru said, no, you are not ready. Wow. Then I can't imagine that happening, happening nowadays, sir. Impossible. <laughs> It's the guru has to listen to a student. Very true. Another two years he practiced, then he goes back to the guru and says, am I ready? Guru says, no, you're not ready. So this goes on over a period of time. Then suddenly one day, the guru comes and tells him, now you're ready, you can go. Okay. So that gentleman says, I'm no longer interested. So guru is asking him why. So he says, I'm enjoying my music so much. Oh, I don't really wow. what others are going to think about it. Think about it doesn't it. matter anymore to me. Wow. That's such a relevant thing right now. That is the essence of our music. Our guru used to say that when you sit on stage, understand this, you're not a trapezium artist. No uh, you know, offense meant for that. But you have a role to play because you. it is a highest form of Sankirtana. Wow. I'm having... So Oh, sir, listening to you, that's wow. Absolutely. He used to say that to us. So you have a responsibility when you sit there. People who come and listen to you, you actually don't sing for them. You sing for yourself and you sing for the God on whose name it is. And the audience will be a part of you. Wow. So you need to understand that just like you have a bhajan, this is another form where you need responsibility. That is how we have come up or we have grown and we that's what we look for when we look at a stage. Right. No, that makes a lot of sense because it grounds you, right? Yeah. Absolutely. It's all about sadhana. So if you really look at you know, social media today, it is again a wonderful way to reach out. But again, it's a question of what you communicate. But the very fact is very clear. Nothing is, you know, replaces your practice. Those days, I would know MSG sir used to practice for 14 hours a day. Appa. 12 hours a day, 14 hours a day. Those now kids days. are like, I'm bored. After one hour, they're like, I'm bored. Can I go? And they didn't have a choice. Ustad Ghilayar Khan used to chain his son in a room just enough. The chain used to be big enough just to go to the restroom. That's it. Oh he my God. Yes. So nowadays, if we think of that also, the kid will be like, I'll call child protection services. Absolutely. But you can see the difference. Yeah. Yes, that's true. That's, that's how it comes. It's like ripening of a fruit. You think you know it all. But you keep at it, you keep at it. Then you understand, oh, how did I miss this? How did I miss that? Those are those small, small things which embellishes your music. It comes only through practice. Right. I think this aspect applies to all kinds of arts from pain everywhere, to, everywhere. to singing. That's so true. That's so true. Ma'am, uh, for example, you, I know you were um, fully in, in a full-time job, right? So how was it first hard? And then how did you choose to give that up and then do this full-time? Because that's not an easy decision at all, both of you. But first, I want to ask your ideas on it. And then I want to ask, sir, how he was able to support you. I will start with you first, ma'am. See, at different points of my life, I've given up things which I thought would interfere with my music practice. Wow. I got a medical seat. I didn't take up the medical profession because I knew 
I wouldn't be able to concentrate on my music then. Oh my God, ma'am, that's yes, because Veena is very demanding. It needs a lot of stamina, and we used to practice for eight to ten hours in a day. When you know, when you're talking about the childhood thing, we remember we used to have power cuts in Calcutta. So we we used to actually finish our homework, finish our play, everything with friends and all. And in the evening, when they when there would be no power, just candles. We all three sisters, all three of us used to learn music. So mm-hmm. three of us would just sit and practice, sing, play. That's it. Wow, wow. The end. It's a way of life. It is not like you had. Absolutely, that is the most important thing. You have to make it a way of life. Only then, you know, it will. it will embrace you in the way in which it you want to do. wow so how did that translate into you taking an action like this one to giving up your job and doing this full time yes i'll tell you because after my education you know i was in a, a job i was uh, an assistant professor in a pharmacy college for a while and then i started my medical transcription business yes i took an office and i had people working under me and all that it was and we still you know managed to have that uh, run with concerts and stuff but when i started teaching mm-hmm. that uh, at that point i had to make a decision because uh, we more and more people were wanting to learn learn it yes and so but that's that, not an easy choice man because students can be you know put it mildly fickle because they might learn for the next one one half years and then suddenly decide that they don't want to do it anymore so you have you invest as gurus you invest a lot of time effort energy into them so and nowadays we feel that a lot especially there are so many new teachers they are also young so they also are wanting to be like this but then they are scared they like should i do this so how has your experience been in handling that aspect um see the concert playing and your own performance is one thing because you can time your day according to very true your, uh, uh, you know uh, the way the day pans out but with teaching you have fixed times for uh, uh, ah, teaching so. students will come at that appointed time so you have to make yourself available and you also have to dedicate yourself only then will it happen so if you are doing too many things at the same time the first thing is you have only 24 hours so there is something that you have to give up for the sake of doing something else that is true very true ma very true so, Do you choose music? Assumed a very important uh, part of life. Very suddenly, you know, once the students started coming, they just kept on coming. So there was a point when I um, said that at least one of us, I think, should now uh, take this as full time. Both of us are working. Uh, otherwise, people who are coming with the motive of learning from you, we won't be able to fulfill their aspirations. True. So that is how it. But that's such a noble idea, man. Especially nowadays, it's not the easy way. Or people want to see themselves first. They want to pass on what they can. So it's amazing that you chose to actually put that purpose above trying to just be financially secure alone immediately. So how was your experience? Because you had mom running a little business on the side, and then she suddenly says, "Okay, you know what? I'm let's focus on this. I'm going to do this." and then you have to suddenly deal with that it's not, as a family we know how um, hard it is to change the dynamics so how is how could you do this See, honestly you know one of the things that's been good and touch wood is that uh, we've always taken these decisions together ah. okay and that, that's always there and uh, and honestly i think god's been kind because we probably you know think more or less the same way uh sometimes it can be boring uh, that's <laughs> my next question actually i will come to that so what happened was in terms of the financial security part that is definitely important okay so you you always need to understand where the next meal is going to come from that is true sir that's very true we can't help it plus there are some family responsibilities that one needs to undertake at some point in time so you have to balance the two so we decided that i will continue working because i used to work in the bank i used to work in a multinational bank i was a banker all the time so i used to so we decided i will continue my work but with some you know this you know points to be taken for that and let her take this full time that was how we started 
and because I used to work for the bank, and then I used to work for an IT company, which used to work for Oracle at some point in time. Uh, they wanted me to shift to the U.S. permanently with a promise of a green card. Wow. Wow. So, because the uh, type of work that we were doing in, at that point in time was a little, uh, you know, neat, and we wanted people in the U.S. So, we spent actually a lot of time in the U.S., me and Jay Shri, actually. I'm, that's I, I, uh, I want to approach that about the international show, but one question before that. I'll be very honest, it's very hard for couples to work together, especially when they're in the same field. There's a lot of, um, you know, things that come up. So I, I cannot say that I see anything like that. You guys had a... <laughs> no, no we, had, so we had a share of fun. There were people who've come to us and asked in Tamil, Hey, between the two of you, who's better? They would actually ask that. Yeah. So I would but say, I would say without hesitation, Jayashri is better. And Jayashri would say without hesitation, Jairaj is better. So yes. they oh know. my God, see there, I think that's what makes it work for so, Those are things that will always be a part and parcel of your life. So you need to have your own convictions and courage to handle this. These things happen. So yeah. that's the type of we made so we decided that you know, one of us would continue working but then i decided not to leave india that's such I mean, a beautiful decision chennai especially chennai so we got some opportunities to move to the us we got some opportunities to move to australia but you still have traveled both of you have traveled yeah, yeah we have traveled a lot which is your favorite after chennai in india which is your favorite place to be uh, my favorite is honestly new york Wow, sir, welcome. Next time you come, please visit. Yeah, yeah honestly, at that point, you know, I've spent more than uh, a year plus in the US at the same time. I, we were, I think, three months at a stretch in New Brunswick. Yeah, New Brunswick is right here. Like, I wish yeah. I to live there. And yes. uh, at least in New York, I probably knew every street by street, lane. So, wow. in Avenue, if you really ask me which are the Indian uh, restaurants, I could probably deal those names out. Oh my god, sir, we have to go and crash New York. Yeah. So, I'm those are the uh, Then we spent a lot of time in Miami. We spent yeah. probably about six months in Miami. Wow. Okay, so for a long time for work. Because that time I used to work and work used to take me off. So, I have probably, and Jeshi has also traveled with me. He's traveled probably the whole practically greater part of the world, including some places like Taipei and others. <laughs> Not many people have gone. Wow, so, that's amazing, ma'am. The music has literally taken you all over too, right? Yeah, we have. Australia, again, Sydney is like a very good favorite place of mine. I really love Sydney. Again, I know probably most of the lines and violins of Sydney and how it works. So you should write a guide's book, sir. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting this done. Uh, can write can write. Write. So people <laughs> used to because when I come back to India, they say, "So when are you going back to your hometown?" Wow. <laughs> so, but it, it was tough because to both of us to you know come together. So we used to do a long, you know, long distance practice as well. Right. Wow. Because it used to be so that I would come to India maybe today, and then three days later we had a concert. So we had to do a lot of the long, long distance practice and I think Jeshri also has, you know, undertaken a lot of responsibility back home, taking care mm -hmm. of her parents, my parents, uh, you know, she's done. That's what makes us relatable, man, because all of us have those kind of responsibilities that we should not give up also. So, sir, I want to ask you to write that book and ma'am, I know you Absolutely. are a fashionista, I'm a personal huge fan, so oh I Yes, I know you have your own Bindi sense also, right? Yes. Yeah, that's a page on Instagram. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I love your style and then I can't wait to see you explore a little bit more of that also. Oh my God. <laughs> Look, that's very important, ma'am. That's very important. Yeah, I'm very traditional and old-fashioned. How come? Ma'am, traditional is the in thing. Who said that's not beautiful? Okay. So, uh, I think you're totally slaying that also. <laughs> Um, I... well, one very important question I have.
I know about your Veena JJ app. So could you tell us how you started it and where where you see it going? Started because people started telling us, why don't you share what you know and what are the ways of sharing what you know? Why don't you do this? So we thought, why not the uh, you know the electronic media? Why not the virtual way of you know going and meeting people? That was our tribute, small tribute to our gurus. They have been so generous. Purnima, this Thursday Tanum that we have in the Facebook now, right? the number of youngsters who have come back to us talking about it and thinking about it and, you know, right. understanding about it. Krishna Nye Begane Baroo 